Hi, this is Annette Ross, host of Common Ground on the Sylvia Global Media Network. And today I have with me Luke Miner, who is the co-founder and director of YouCaring.com. Um, Luke, hi. Thank you for joining us today. Hey, absolutely. I'm excited to be excited to be uh, on the show here with you. It's going to be fun. Yes, it's going to be a lot of fun. I wanted to first ask you to tell me a little bit about YouCaring.com. Yeah. Um, well, YouCaring is a it's an online platform, a crowdfunding platform. So, some of the way I describe it is a lot of people are familiar with Kickstarter yeah. as a crowdfunding platform for projects. We're a crowdfunding platform for causes. So, individuals raising money for adoptions, missions trips medical expenses, memorial fundraisers, tuition, and uh, anything along that category. Well, you know, I went on the website last night and got a chance to look at it a little bit, and of course the first right. question that popped in my head was, how do you know that it's <laughs> legit? I mean, how do you know yeah. that someone really, you know, has that? Isn't that terrible? That sounds that sounds awful, right? But, <laughs> but I do know uh, that. It's uh, it's actually it is a fairly common question, and I would say a very merited question because you have so many things on the internet um, right now that you know credibility is is everything. So uh, the first answer is um, we have so we have uh, over ten thousand fundraisers on the site right now. So we're not actually able to go through and make each one prove their legitimacy. Um, and so what we do to kind of combat uh, any kind of fraud is always encouraging people to donate to only someone that they know or trust or that they have really, really good proof on the, on the fundraiser for their cause is true. Um, now we do have a very active donor base, so we have a lot of people will kind of find out uh, fundraisers that look questionable and report them to us, and then we will track down actual information and shut down any that proved to be fraudulent. Um, but there's so much on there, it's po impossible to catch every single one. So I, I would think that people who, a lot of people who have the greatest needs might not have people who necessarily know about them. So when you're saying that it would be, you would say, for people to give money for people that they actually know. I'm thinking that a lot of people who might go to use youcaring.com don't have anyone that they know to help them. So you're saying basically, unless something looks suspect, um, anonymous people will give to it sort of anonymous people. <laughs> yeah, well, what we found is is we thought there would be a little bit more of strangers giving to strangers in yeah. the beginning. And, and we've just found over time that because of the exact question that you're asking right now is most people end up just donating to people they know and trust already. Um, and so when people come on our site and they expect just to make a lot of money because they're posting a great cause with a great picture, um, that doesn't really happen that way. It really happens through relationship. And what you caring is, is we connect people. We connect people who already have relationship and trust to we provide a platform for them to help each other. Um, so we're not a silver bullet, you know, for no. somebody who has a need, but we connect people who already know each other to fulfill that need. Because you think often those people aren't comfortable with the ask? It's easier to do it through a sort of... Um, you, you know what's sort of interesting to me? Yeah. Um, it, not necessarily that they're not comfortable with the ask, but that it's it's a, so much more of a, you know, 50 years ago, families lived really close to each other. And uh, it was rare for somebody to move, you know, farther than the neighboring town or or the next state. Um, now, now you're finding people will be really relocating for jobs. They'll be moving kind of all over the world for college or, you know, for whatever reason. And... Uh, something like you caring is a real big need to connect those people who aren't connected in a face-to-face -face basis, um, and that's that's where we really come in is because of so much is spreading out 
people are spreading out and they're not staying in one town their whole life. And we help connect those people back to their friends and family, wherever they are. Are you seeing success? Am I seeing success? Yeah. Absolutely. Can you tell yeah. me a story? <laughs> um, one of my favorite, one of like, one of the causes that really uh, typifies our heart and also is a little bit, uh, it is really sad, but it, it really shows the generosity of people, is there was, a, I believe it's the benefit for Sean Smith is the title of the fundraiser on our site. And uh, what happened was he was in the, he was uh, one of the guards in a consulate that got attacked uh, about a year and a half ago, an, an international U.S. consulate, and um, when they got attacked, he died. And uh, so what happened was somebody put a fundraiser on you caring to support the family. Um, I believe he had a wife and two kids. And he, this guy, Sean Smith, had been a part of a, a very active part of an online gaming community. And we got to see over 2,000 people come together from the gaming community and from their friends and family, probably at least 1,500 of them from that gaming community that would never have had the opportunity to connect by, you know, I'll give you these ten, this $10 or I'll give you this 20 or $50 in person. But they were all able to come together. Over 2,000 people donated to raise, I think it was like $140,000 for the family, um, for the memorial expenses and um, to get them a head start on life now that the provider, the sole, you know, money maker was gone. Um, so that was a really, really beautiful to see 2,000 people from around the world, e even just connected by a gaming community, um, really come together and support a family. Is it most often those sorts of stories that are really sort of sad like that? Are there? Is it not the kind of place you go to? You know, if you want to raise money for a documentary film. I mean, you caring is mostly about some of the. The yeah, we're about the cause. Um, so if a non-profit is looking for a documentary film to feature a cause, Got it. you know, a feature, you know, something like that, we would love to have that on our site. Um, but we, we aren't going to be the best place for more of a project-based or business-based um, because we don't have the community there surrounding around that. That would be Kickstarter or Indiegogo are excellent resources for that. Um, for us, what you're going to find is that most people are raising money are, are going to be in that medical expenses, missions trips, um, and, uh, and memorial fundraisers are the biggest. How did you come up with this idea? Um, so it was me and a co-founder, Brock Ketcher. Um, we were in Northern California. There's a, a lot of mission sending. There's a large mission sending organization, both you know, faith-based and non-faith-based. Some some of it medical, um, medical missions or emergency missions like Haiti, for instance, going to the Haiti earthquake and kind of rescuing. Um, and we found that so many people were trying to raise money for these mission trips and didn't have a really good platform to do it. And the platforms that were out there were pretty expensive. Um, to use, they'd take five to set five to nine percent of the total right off the top, and uh, we, you know, we thought it was tra a tragedy that all, so much money was going to the operational expenses. Um, so we said, well, I think we could build something. We both had other jobs at the time. We both said, I think we could build something that could really help provide a platform for these people. And what we found is that although that community did. Uh, is a, a part of you caring. We found is all these other categories opened up and really started using you caring as a resource for many different kinds of fundraising for causes. And they just sort of found you randomly, you know? They <laughs> No, I mean I know that sounds dumb, but I I hadn't I hadn't No, it doesn't. <laughs> I hadn't heard of you yet. So, I mean, if I had you know, God forbid, was in a situation my daughter was sick or something, and I I wouldn't have known to even, you know, yeah. find yeah, it. Well, 
what's what's interesting with this type of a business is that when one person adopts the site and they send it out to 20, 50, 100, 500 of their friends, it's 500 new people that hear about it. Right. So initially we told a few of our friends, uh, we did a very little bit of online marketing, advertising, and then just released it on the internet. And, uh, and those few friends, you know, told a few more friends. Our first donation was somebody donating from New Zealand to California to a California fundraiser. Um, and it was that point that I, it really struck me, this thing is going to go international because this connects people. It's a, there was no way that person could have ever been connected to that fundraiser that easily. Um, so once one person knows, then a whole other group of friends know, and that's the way we've, we've really grown is word of mouth. And for how long? How long has this been going? How long have you had you caring? Uh, we released the website in October 2011. And are you, is there a way, now this is me, not knowing enough about the internet, is there a way to find <laughs> out, to monitor like how many people are taking a peek at it and looking and viewing it? A lot of people, are you getting a lot of traction? Yeah, we, yeah, absolutely. Um, we had our, our biggest week last week um, as far as traffic and averaging uh, right around probably 700,000 visits to the site. Um, and that would be that would be information that somebody could find on the internet in a few different places, Alexa.com or um, a few different uh, information resources online. But averaging probably about 700 visits um, a week to you caring or 700,000. Sorry. Oh wow, 700,000 visits per week. Yes. So that's uh -huh. huge. I mean, is that huge? It's it's very big. Um, on Alexa, on Alexa.com, it's a, a information that or a website that will give you information about sites all over the internet. It's rated right about the top 4,000 website in the U.S. as far as traffic. Um, so it's a very large site. Wow. So you were saying that um, some of the missions people there wasn't a really good platform it, originally when you were thinking the idea that some of these missions would have had to pay? Yeah. You're, um, not, you're not charging. No, so uh, what we found when we first entered the industry, I guess you could call it, the crowdfunding industry, is that most people charged between 5 to 9%. Um, most websites took it off the top. A few of those had the credit card fees or transactions wrapped into that. A few of those charge them on top. So you could really pay anywhere from uh, six to probably eleven percent of the total that would go toward this website hosting it, and we said, you know, we really don't need the extra. You know, we're not trying to make money on this thing. We're just trying to help people. So let's just give it away for free. Um, now every fundraiser still needs to pay their uh, credit card transaction fees by from PayPal or WePay um, is the other payment processor. It was right about three percent, but we don't take anything else. Um, so we offer it completely for free. So then wait, is it a business for you? Yeah, it is. A, it's a, a for-profit LLC, um, but the, the only way we make money, and, and we kind of adopted this from uh, Kiva.org, which is a large, um, or we're inspired by Kiva.org, which is a large uh, microloan website, is that 100% of the donation would go to the microloan agency but then Kiva would give the donor an option to give kind of a tip um, back to the website's operational expenses. Okay. And, uh, and we said, you know, since we're just trying to help as much people as possible, let's make the only way we can make money a tip, and then we'll just put that money back into the website and uh, let it grow. Because we, we both had other jobs, so we weren't looking for it as a source of income. That's the only way we make money ever. So, do you still have another job then? Now I'm just sort of asking about you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, are, first of all, are people tipping and then do you need another job to sort of sustain your life while you keep on growing the website? Um, great question. I quit my job back in December and I had a, a pretty 
I had saved quite a bit of money so I could live for about a year on what I had I'd saved and my business partner had, still is working on other things. So we're not you know, relying fully on, I, I have other projects as well, we're not relying fully on, uh, on new income for income which puts us in a really great spot and enables us to put so much of that money right back into the website and make it a, a better resource for people. Um, people do tip, definitely not everyone does and we're definitely making less per donation than their other sites, but it, it hits our heart, and that's what we love. We get to help more people this way. Wow. So, okay, then if you're that kind of... <laughs> I believe you. So how are you this kind of person? I mean, what? tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, yeah, it's a great <laughs> question. I think there's this interesting thing for me in that I, I was raised in definitely a very giving, caring family. Um, it was kind of an open house, always an, an open house for people who needed help to come in and out. And uh, you got to see so many people just helped, whether it was you know helping them get a job, giving them a place to stay for a little bit. My parents still, um, some of the most incredible people I know are, are my parents. They, they're door is literally a revolving door where anywhere between you know, two and six or eight people could be in the house at any time getting counseling or, or being helped um, and uh, I think that's that had really left a big mark on me so um, I, I, I love it it's my favorite thing are they are like are your parents like therapists or what was it that made the environment of your home a place where people wanted to come and sort of, you know, yeah. nurture? Um, yeah, my parents were my parents were pastors of a few small churches, so it's a so okay. they you know, they were Christians and uh, lived you know lived a, an incredible faith based life. I you know I, I've adopted that for myself, so it makes me excited to be able to help this many people. Um, you know, but it just, it's just, it's a part of my personality, I guess, is one of my favorite things. I, the great day, a great day for me is when I go to bed and I've connected one person with another person who can help each other. And, uh, and my, my personal philosophy is when you have that focus on helping people and really bringing life and adding value, this is something I've got, I don't know if you're familiar with Seth Godin, he's a very large marketing a blog and a, an incredible uh, thought leader for marketing, but when you're really bringing something to the table that is helping the most people, you're always going to be blessed back for it. And that's just the way I want to live my life. Wow. I think that that is really, really extraordinary and that you're not looking for anything really back for yourself other than just for giving. Let me, let me ask you now, then just the, the, the gift of giving, and it is a gift to give. It's a gift to give and it's a gift to receive. But, you know, um, seeing so many people in need, and I'm sure, you know, if you're going on the website and you're maintaining the website and you're seeing people in need, what does that do to your faith? Is that hard for you? Um, That's always been a challenge for me. So my yeah. question is sort of, you know, um, as a person also who is a believer and really strong faith, I see that and I think um, there's just so much need out there. Absolutely. Um, it doesn't discourage you? No. I mean, I think it would if I didn't believe I could do something about it. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I see people's lives change every day on our website. And every single day, somebody gets hope, somebody gets life. I get emails all the time, emails literally saying, you've changed my life, um, you've given me a second chance, this website has, and uh, for me, it would be discouraging if I didn't believe that I was being a part of the answer, and that what we were doing was actually changing culture, you know, it's, it's so much more than just a, a free fundraising website. Uh, for me, it's it's about changing culture, a culture of giving, a culture of of uh, we we bless each other, and I I 
being part of the answer keeps me from ever being able to be discouraged. Well, you know what? I mean, it is a gift to be on both sides of that exchange. It's really a gift to be on the receiving end. It's really a gift to be the person who's giving. Um, and I guess if it does change the way people think about giving and receiving, then that's a really good thing because I do think there is a feeling sometimes of despair and hopelessness or, and maybe helplessness mm -hmm. in all of that. So, I mean, I think sometimes when you feel like you, you said, look, you can't do anything about it, which is sometimes how I feel, like, oh, those problems seem really insurmountable to me or monumental mm -hmm. and Absolutely. sort of chipping away at it and changing the way people think about problems as if everyone sort of gathers a little bit and does a little something, Absolutely. then, you know, big things can happen, which, I don't know, For <laughs> that is just, um, you know what, that's really a hopeful, optimistic attitude and it has to come from that seed of faith that can actually yeah. move mountains. And, you know, in my thinking, in my experience, I Absolutely. think despair is really a... Um, a problem we have in society as well. I mean, do you agree with that? Probably not from where you're sitting and what you're doing, but I mean, if you're really I, looking at the world too. Um, absolutely, and I think, yeah, I, one of my biggest passions is to see people empowered to realize that they can do something about it. They can change. I, I think we do see so many people who are um, limited by the mindsets of saying I can't more than I can and uh, and that's the inspiration I want I want to bring because I think we can change the biggest problems that the world is facing can be changed um, by teamwork and by combining together our resources no there's no silver bullet there's no one silver bullet but there is a teamwork and I think we can solve them all all the problems oh, gee. Um, so that's what I'm not saying necessarily you caring or me, but what what I'm saying is with this idea, with this mindset, with this perspective, I I think if that really hit, you know, even a hundred thousand people um, could solve most of the world's problems. And do you think that's how God works through people? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, do you think he? intervenes in other ways and any sort of, I mean, I guess we don't understand the mystery of God, but I would love to hear from you if you think you've ever seen, I don't know, a miracle. Um, I, I absolutely have. Um, you know, my personal, my, my, I've seen God do some of the most incredible things. I, th I think you caring is a miracle that we end up grow, growing. I think it was a direct revelation from God. That uh, that this is happening, um, you know. As far as other things, I've seen uh, physical healings. I really believe God does that on a regular basis all over the world, and I've seen um, a significant amount of that, and uh, and many many other types of miracles. This is just another one. You know what? I feel like if you're close to suffering like that, and you're close to people in need then you are more apt to see those things. I mean, there was mm -hmm. a quote, you know, by C.S. Lewis that I'm sure you've heard of him, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and that's something that he said. He said, you know, miracles, are they, you know, supernatural miracles, you know, are they there, are they not there? But when you're close to things like you're close to, like suffering and like people helping people, no, I think he said part of it is being in the atmosphere where that kind of a thing can take place, which also means you've got to be on the front lines of the suffering piece of it and the piece of it where there is tremendous need. Yeah. That's probably why you've had the blessing of seeing <laughs> no miracles, God's, you know, God coming in and touching, right? Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. his hand touching this world through, you know, other people like yourself. And I think it's, you know, it really, it really touches my heart. I've seen a lot of, um, awesome. I've seen a lot of people. Um, we had, you know, friends who had a child who was really, really ill at the time. I didn't even know about uh, you caring. And again, now you've told me, you've told more people, like you said, 500 people, then they tell 500 people, and that's how your website is able to grow. Absolutely. Is, 
is the maintenance on it overwhelming to you, or are you able to keep up? You know that it really it has been growing so fast that uh, ever since we started, we've been flying by the seat of our pants, trying to keep up with with uh, keep up with it, I guess. Um, but at the same time, it is a joy. You know, it's a, it's a joy. Sometimes I, you know, I'm up to one, two in the morning answering emails, um, helping people out. But for me, that's not. I, I, you know, pick something you love, and you'll never work a day in your life. I understand. And that's how I feel. So people can access you directly, then. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it goes right through our on our contact us page. Uh, most of those emails, not all, and we're starting to add more of a team um, so we can handle a greater influx of emails. But most of those emails do come to me. Wow! So you are really gathering a lot of influx. You're hearing a lot of people's personal stories, and yeah. you're definitely you're definitely on the ground, you know, of the groundwork of all this and building it up. It is just it's absolutely. It's very, it's so special. I think it's really special. Thank you, Annette. You're welcome. Um, so thank you so much for joining me on Common Ground, Luke. Um, I hope to see you again. Hear more about people that are being helped through youcaring.com, and I hope that Sylvia Global Media Network can be supportive of you as well in every way that we Absolutely. can. Absolutely. Because I think that's what Sylvia Global is really all about: people helping other people. Absolutely, I, and I appreciate that, and I would love to, love to, uh, love to do that with you guys and, and help more people together. That's right, absolutely. All right, thank you so much. Thank You're you, welcome. To Minor. Thank you to Sylvia Global Media Network, and this is Annette signing off for Common Ground. Bye bye.